Hi, everybody. I didn't do a quote of the day the last three days. I didn't really feel good. I started to make one, and then I decided not to put it up. So, um, anyway, I feel better now. And today I'm going to tell you a little story, something that happened to me recently. I had jury duty, and um, I was calling all week. You know how you call the night before, and this machine tells you if you have to show up the next day. So all week, all week, I was not being called in. Finally, I got called in on a Friday. And I was actually pretty excited to um, see what happens with being on a jury because I haven't served before. And um, there was a lot of waiting involved. And then a large group of us, maybe 40 people or so, get called into this um, courtroom. And the defendant is there, his the defense lawyer, the prosecution, and the detective working with the prosecution and the judge. And um, we're all there in the seats, the um, audience seats, and the judge introduces everybody and then tells us the charges. Guess what the charges were? Double murder. And I'm just sitting there very calmly, but on the inside I was like, oh my god! And double murder and and the charges involved a shotgun a crowbar and a machete and the back of my mind i'm like oh my god oh my god pick me pick me pick me pick me does that sound a little weird to you okay well i'm weird but i felt like everybody else there you know all the jurors on the breaks they were like oh god i hope they don't pick me i have so much work to do who's gonna pick my kids up from school i can't do this i have classes to take i just can't do this and i'm just on the inside thinking oh my god i totally want to do this pick me and so i got picked and i was juror number six i was juror number six all day so i got picked out of the 12 and i'm sitting up in the little juror box and i'm number six and they're questioning all day i mean you got to tell them everything you go through all this questioning where you went to school from high school on up what did you study um all about your family you have to say if you've ever been convicted of a crime, if anybody close to you has ever been convicted of a crime, you have to answer um, questions like, uh, do, do you know anybody who is in law enforcement? These kinds of things. And so, um, so I do have someone close to me who works in law enforcement, so I had to talk about that. And then uh, another thing that came up was my education, just saying that, um, I went to Berkeley and uh, but otherwise I didn't have anything to say that really made me stand out and I was surprised the defense didn't kick me off because of my relationship with someone who's in law enforcement that could make me sort of lean towards or have a bias towards the prosecution side but the defense didn't get rid of me and prosecution didn't get rid of me so I was there all day and it was like the end of the day and what they keep doing is they go back and forth. Each side take turns um, getting rid of um, one juror at a time, somebody that they think might be biased. And then an alternative is called up from the audience group. So um, I was there all day. And you know what was creepy is this guy, he's like in his 60s. Could be even 70, but he's definitely in his 60s. This older guy, you know, he's got this mustache, and he's sitting there like the whole day with a smirk on his face. A smirk. Like, you are about to be tried for double homicide. Why do you have a smirk on your face? I'll tell you why. Because he's crazy! Anyway, um, at the end of the day, the prosecution looked at me and she goes, we would like to thank and dismiss juror number six. And I was like, and I'm thinking inside, I didn't say anything. I just behaved all politely and said, thank you, goodbye. But on the inside, I just wanted to like get on my hands and knees in front of the judge and the prosecution go, please don't release me. I really want to serve the justice system and be a part of such a wonderful justice system. 
<sighs> but they let me go. And, and then I went home and I was all upset. So I called my family member who is involved in law enforcement. I'm like, it's all your fault. I got kicked off. They probably thought I was going to be biased or maybe the prosecutor knew you. Maybe she's worked with you before and it's all your fault. And they were like, geez, you know, probably wasn't my fault. They probably kicked you off because you're, you went to Berkeley and you sound like a bleeding heart liberal. And I was like, oh, I am a liberal, but I'm not no bleeding heart. I, I actually, I probably am biased because I, I'm not really soft on crime. <sighs> I got kicked off. So I was upset, like brooding the whole evening. All my shattered, oh, I just messed that up. Okay, let me say it again. All my hopes and dreams have been shattered because I really wanted to serve. Next time I get on a jury, do you think I'm going to get a big case like this? No, I'll probably get some stupid DUI or some possession case or something stupid. I'm never going to get the chance to be on a double murder case again. So I was very upset about this. And I wanted to know why the prosecution asked me to go. And the next morning, I take my kid on Saturday mornings to uh, a toddler gym class. And I walk into class, and one of the parents, whom I see there every week, and I, the lights went off. Bing! That's the prosecutor who let me go. So I came up to her, and I'm like, is your name so-and-so? Because I wasn't sure. I really wasn't sure. I know I saw this woman every Saturday, but I wasn't sure if that's the same woman I saw yesterday in the courtroom. Because, you know, Saturday morning, she looks different than when she was in the courtroom all in a suit. So I came up to her and asked, is this your name? She's like, yes. And, and I was like, oh, why did you kick me off? Please tell me why you kicked me off. And she's like, you know, I didn't recognize you from the Saturday morning classes. But I would have had to kick you off anyway, Monday morning, once I realized your, our kids have a gym class together. And, um, but, so I'm like, is it because of my family member who's in law enforcement and you know them? And she's like, no. And I was like, is it because I seem like a bleeding heart liberal? And she's all, no, not really. And I'm like, why? And she said, you know what? I was going to have you on. I had a plus next to your name. I was going to keep you. But I went with instincts. Some, I don't know what it was. She said at the last moment, she just felt like I shouldn't be on this case. And she let me go. So there was such a sense of relief after that because, I don't know, I sort of, I got an answer. I got to talk to her about it. And then I'm like, okay, I'm not on the jury anymore. Can you give me the juicy details about the case? And so she's told me a little bit that it was like a love triangle and this guy is freaking crazy, and next time I see her, I'm going to get to know whether the jury convicted him or not. Anyway, I would I would have been fair. I would have been fair if I was on that jury. I would have, you know, if there's any reasonable doubt, you can't convict. I would have been fair. But boy, if he is guilty beyond a reasonable doubt, it would have been good to be a part of making justice in this world, making the justice system work, making a murderer, you know, go behind bars and um, be separate from the rest of society, if that were the case. Or if he's innocent, to set someone free who deserves to be free. So I would have been fair, but it's so exciting. I love watching, like, crime shows. I'm a crime show junkie. Not even the drama fake ones, like CSI or something. I like the true crime stuff. I just find forensics and cases like that so interesting. So, I missed being on the big murder trial. Try again next year when I get summoned. All my hopes and dreams shattered.